Wrestling documentaries are great. This doesn't make much sense today, given we pretty much have a window into everything behind the scenes, but when a good one comes along, it somehow manages to whip up a storm within the wrestling community and spark conversation. I still want more, and I've been watching these for 20 years. If anyone ever releases a properly good one about Vince McMahon, I may explode. He apparently shaves more than once a day. Trying to run down these is always going to be a matter of preference or mood, but just because it's nice to start debates such as this, I'm Simon from What Culture and this is the 10 best wrestling documentaries ever. This is an exploration of Lucha Libre and a look at three masked wrestlers whose lives and whose own identities were transformed by it. Oh, I used to love to make a boo. And I make children cry. Oh, that was good. I believe right now that your alcoholism is getting the worst of you again. I know. It's what I believe. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, dub. <laughs> Number 10, the rise and fall of WCW. In 2004, just a few years after WCW was dead, WWE brought out a DVD which was focused on the Monday Night Wars. It sounded awesome, but as many people realized, there were some glaring errors within it, or at least history being told by the victors. The company tried to right those wrongs five years later when they tried again with the rise and fall of WCW, which yes, borrowed the title from ECW, and everyone involved did a damn good job in getting decades of information down into just two hours. There's only so much you can do with that, and really, it's got it's spot on. Honest, highlighting Eric Bischoff's product in the way it deserved and admitting that yes, at one point WCW was the better of the two brands, it also jumps into how poorly managed it was by the end and why it died in 2001. It's certainly not a comprehensive history of WCW regardless of what it may say, and as long as you accept that, you'll enjoy this. It's like wrestling maths. Number 9, Warrior the Ultimate Legend. The second attempt by WWE at an Ultimate Warrior documentary after the 2005 self-destruction debacle, this one is far more positive, and I appreciate that. I think the company would as well, because there was no lawsuit this time around. Going down when the Warrior patched things up with his former employers and then tragically passed away soon after, this is a far more balanced look at one of the biggest stars we've ever seen. And that is true no matter what you think of the man, he made a huge impact. The real joy is that it goes beyond the character and actually humanizes Warrior by showing him at his most vulnerable as he looks back at a career which came to such a grinding halt in the early 90s. There is a sincerity to the film then, and his unfortunate death a few years ago only makes that even more poignant. But it's nice that it exists, especially given what we had beforehand. Number 8, The British Wrestler. The UK wrestling scene in 2018 is perhaps stronger than it's ever been. Promotions all over the shop, World of Sport, NXT UK, you can't get away from it, and nor should you want to. It's awesome. That's why Vice's 2012 documentary on life within the squared circle offers a very pleasant glimpse into the careers of various performers with Grado taking center stage. That works mostly down to his unconventional path to the ring and how hard it is to make a name for yourself in this bizarre world that we call wrestling. Significantly, this also looks at the other side. Away from the glitz and glamour, part-time wrestlers very often combine their grappling with a normal day job as they hope to one day get a life-changing break. The highlight comes, of course, when Grado reveals that he got stuck with his ring name after getting it tattooed on his arm during a drunken night out in Magaluf, despite the fact nobody ever called him that. That makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Number 7, Forever Hardcore. Paul Heyman's presence is most definitely missed in Jeremy Borash's unofficial ECW documentary, but you do get one or two faces who didn't feature in the WWE counterpart. So ups and downs and all that. Remarkably, Forever Hardcore succeeds in taking viewers behind the ECW curtain despite not showing a single piece of footage from the promotion's heyday. Without the rights to the library, Borash relies instead on lengthy in-depth interviews with most of its roster and opts to just use photos to cover any edits. Simple, but effective. It's it's raw, it's real, and those sat in front of the camera seem noticeably more relaxed and candid than they were in front of the WWE production crew. They tell it like it was to viewers who already have some baseline knowledge of the wrestling world. If you can't live without match footage, then you should probably give this a miss, but it is hugely informative and in places, very entertaining too. He just killed me, left me hanging on a damn cross, so I'm supposed to be, you know, I can't rise from the dead yet, it's not Easter. Number 6, CM Punk Best in the World. This documentary is even more interesting now, given that in 2018, CM Punk and WWE hate each other. Here in 2012, it's probably as rosy as it ever was, and the sheer depth this goes into is just fascinating, especially as it serves as the last hurrah for the straight edge superstar. As you'd expect, it is very WWE heavy, but there is early footage of Punk as he's just starting out and goes 
goes over how he made his way up the indie ladder. You even get a glance into how he went about developing his iconic in-ring persona. There's not too much in the way of censorship either as Punk, along with advocate Paul Heyman, talk candidly about the struggles and concerns he had after getting to the big time. It's honest, compelling, and could also be considered the definitive CM Punk collection given that he is now absolutely finished with the sport of kings. Number five, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Heyman. There are no shortage of Paul Heyman interviews to devour during your spare time on YouTube, but because the man is smarter than us all, it's rare he drops that precious commodity known as kayfabe. This is what makes the documentary so compelling and also so good. It takes you behind the man you have watched play one of wrestling's greatest heels, showing him interacting playfully with his fellow professionals and genuinely talking openly about his whirlwind life both behind and in front of the camera. It really does feel like he goes all out here. At two hours long, this isn't short, but it's also utterly hypnotizing because it's so interesting, mainly as Heyman explains the struggles with keeping ECW afloat and his desire to help out the superstars of tomorrow. It's brilliant, to be honest, and if you ever doubted as to whether a WWE-produced documentary can also be authentic, this is the proof of just that. Number four, Beyond the Mat. Coming at a time where wrestling wasn't as out there as it is today, Barry Blaustein's 1999 Beyond the Mat is loved by everyone. This is so true, there's plenty of rumors out there that it also served as a source of inspiration for the team behind The Wrestler. Not hard to see that either, there's lots of similarities. This goes beyond just breaking kayfabe 2 as it actually takes you inside the private lives of pro wrestlers such as Mick Foley, Terry Funk and Jake Roberts. It doesn't hold back either, looking at the truly dark areas of the sport and let you see a side maybe we didn't actually want exposed. Pulling no punches, its realist moments perhaps come courtesy of Jake Roberts, whose dramatic fall from grace is chronicled in an extremely personal and uncomfortable way. On top of that, it also gives us a rare and revealing glimpse into the family of the men who put their their bodies on the line every week in their name of entertainment, making for some particularly touching and at times heartbreaking scenes. When I was growing up, I swore up and down I would never treat my kids the way my father treated me. And 24 years later, I look back and say, my God, you've done the exact stinking same thing. Number three, the rise and fall of ECW. 2004's The Rise and Fall of ECW is more than just a documentary because the response to it triggered the following year's One Night Stand reunion and everything that came after that, for better or worse. The film, which is five hours in total, explores, as you might have guessed, the crazy journey of Paul Heyman's extreme championship wrestling as it struggled and ultimately failed to get a foothold in the competitive late 90s scene. Though it was produced by WWE, the portrayal of one of the promotions it cannibalized in 2001 is fairly generous and gives more food for thought in terms of it just being about finances. Heyman, for example, discusses the lack of cooperation from TNN and facing censorship for featuring lesbian characters at a time of relative social conservatism. Unless you came of wrestling age during the Attitude Era, you won't have had the opportunity to live through ECW in all its foul and depraved glory. Watching this is probably the next best thing. Number two, Louis Theroux's Weird Weekends. Well, he is British after all, so let's give a shout out to a man who is excellent at producing whatever documentary he turns his attention towards. A mild-mannered so-and-so, Theroux just knows how to get to the bottom of any subject he chooses to jump into and usually ends up offending at least one person. When he explored the world of pro wrestling, with a particular focus on how you go from zero to hero, it was WCW power plant trainer Sarge who took umbrage at the BBC reporter's suggestions that the happenings of the squared circle may not be totally real. The result is Louis being put through his paces, or bullied if you want a better word, until he literally throws up on camera. It's not pleasant, but it is absolutely required viewing if you want a small taste of what wrestlers put themselves through to get to the top. Everything else is great here as well. Go and watch. Don't you stop! Don't you stop! Don't you stop. Don't stop. What did you say to me? I have a cockroach. Suck my ass! Because I haven't got the will to win! Number one, Hitman Heart Wrestling with Shadows. It's hard to imagine a documentary being so revealing today. Bret Hart at one point literally wires up to secretly record a backstage conversation with Vince McMahon. That is otherworldly. I, I would think it'd be a run in type thing. But, yeah. but I'm open to anything. No, I think that's. I'm open to anything. Like I said before, I'm determined this is going to wind up right well. But the hitman in 1997, who was about to go to WCW, decided to jump into this head first, and given the events that would transpire that year, accidentally stumbled across the most fascinating insight into the most infamous moment in wrestling history. While you can't really go into Wrestling With Shadows expecting to hear a truly balanced account of what went down during the Hitman's final 12 months in WWE, it does all the same offer an extremely up-close version of events. If nothing else, you have to watch the final 10 or 15 minutes wherein the viewer is taken inside the tense locker room at the conclusion of Survivor Series as Shawn Michaels claims he has no idea what was planned. You also have Brett's wife ripping into Triple H in the belief that he was in on the whole thing. It was more interesting than almost anything WWE put in front of the camera that year, 
And that is saying something.